Good afternoon, everyone. We'll let uh, a few people sign in. Um, so we'll take a few seconds uh, before we start the presentation, but thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Really happy for you to be here. It's been a while since we've done a webinar. My name is Mia Bouahidzi. I'm the Head of Investor Relations and Corporate Development for Puma Exploration. And I have here uh, with me today, Marcel Robillard, our President and CEO, who will take you through our latest um, news releases. You may have seen some of them in the past two weeks where we just finished the financing and we also announced what we plan on doing uh, this summer in 2023. So Marcel will take you through that, take you through the presentation. Please, if you have any questions, use the chat bo button to write whatever questions you may have. At the end of the presentation, we'll go through those and uh, Marcel will be able to answer some of the questions that you may have. So please do not feel shy, uh, just type away and I'll be kind of moderating those. So without any further ado, I'll turn it over to Marcel. Thank you very much, uh, Mia. I'm uh, really, really happy to have a few minutes uh, today, this afternoon, to uh, share a little bit uh, what will be the 2023 uh, exploration strategy, the objective of Puma. Uh, for the one that they are online already, thank you. And as you might see on the screen, I'm at the uh, field office in St. Quentin. Uh, it's pretty hot, 32 degrees. So uh, you know, that's the reason why I'm maybe red a little bit. Also, I spend the day with uh, the technical team on site. I've been here since the last two days. It get over a bit uh, what has been done last year. Uh, we also uh, see, you know, uh, the kind of different target. Uh, look again back the uh, main uh, core that we got from the last drilling program. And also, to be honest with you, have few beers to launch the 2023 uh, program. So thank you again to be here. Uh, for the one that they know a bit more Puma, uh, maybe there's some part that you're going to remind. Uh, it's going to be kind of reset things. And for the new uh, people interested in the story, welcome into uh, our uh, Puma story, building a new camp in Atlantic Canada. So at the end of, also maybe at the end, of Mia, uh, what we're going to try after the question, uh, I'm not sure, but if it's possible, I will try to unplug my computer and bring it to the core shack. So just to give an idea to people, you know, the location as background, you see, this is the office. So that's where the geologists are. So in the uh, in St. Quentin, which is about 20 minutes drive only from the site, there's the core shack just behind me. Uh, last time we tried, it didn't happen because the Wi-Fi didn't get to there. So at the end, after the question, they're gonna say to you, bye-bye, and then just stay in line we might have be able to do the the, the, the visit of the core shack and see some some uh, core there. So thank you very much. I'm going to jump. And for one time, you know, I'm not hurry. So we have plenty of time uh, to explain a little bit, uh, you know, uh, what we're planning to do. Uh, basically, those are the major, you know, highlight that is we're going to get through. I won't get uh, read all those. You can do it. Uh, but the presentation, you're going to see most of the point uh, that they are uh, right there. It's going to be a little bit explained and also a bit more, you know, uh, talk about it. So Puma itself, uh, we're located in Atlantic Canada. The project, as you can see, is in Norton, New Brunswick. Uh, the head office is in Rimouski, Quebec, so only about three hours drive away from the site. So uh, just after the, uh, the webinar, it's going to be five o'clock here. It's a bit uh, one hour later than Quebec. Uh, you know, pretty good. I can get my car, drive back and get my kids from the school. So it's pretty nice location, paved road. This is, you know, a little bit what Puma try to do is always to keep low cost exploration. So the reason why Puma has been looking mainly the, the gold uh, since 2019 in Norton, New Brunswick, that's follow a little bit the claim rush that happened in Newfoundland which has been led by uh, many new found gold with very significant, uh, you know, high grade gold intercept. Also Labrador gold that they have been uh, drilling a lot, uh, a long strike with new found gold. Uh, the one that they are more advanced in the area for sure is Marathon that they are doing now the construction phase of the uh, Valentine Lake mine and some other like single gold that they are currently mining for gold. They also have Atlantic golds with Santa Barbara 
in the Galloway Metal. So basically, the area here is covered by the Appalachian Rock, uh, Appalachian Origin, which bring you know a lot of different uh, metallogenic model that they can be found on the property. So our land holding in the area, you know, as I said earlier, is all located within about 50 kilometer maximum from the 180. The road 180 that they call the road to resources has been done to link the two main town in northern New Brunswick, the Bathurst, and also St. Quentin. So right now I'm sitting at the office at the regional office in St. Quentin, which is about 30 minutes from the site. So as today, we left about eight o'clock in the morning, spent the day there. I left back at three o'clock, just enough time to have a shower and be with you here now at four o'clock. So pretty nice location, all uh, linked by uh, the uh, main road. And this is the land holding over 60,000 hectares in Northern New Brunswick. This is the yellow uh, contour, the yellow property, which is the flagship is the William Brook. So we have also the Portage and John Paul. Those are what we call the William Brook project. So the William Brook projects include William Brook South, William Brook, Portage and John Paul, and they are included within the entire land package in New Brunswick. The green is the property that we have worked in the past. We have negotiated some option agreement, one with the Canadian Copper, but also with previous uh, other company. This one are held now by uh, CME, Canadian Metals, but Puma still have in its heart on it. So a part of our strategy is the what we call the DEER strategy, development, exploration, acquisition, and royalty. Those are of the R, royalty, to get any NSR coming from what we think might not be the, the non-core asset for Puma, which is right now the William Brook. Also, in part of giving back to our shareholder, uh, in July, we have done a spin-off of the copper play that we've been working for 25 years, which were the Turgeon, also the Chester, the Murbrook West, and also the Legacy play. And we still have about uh, $2.3 million to receive in share or cash uh, for the next three years. So the next payment is in July this year, $300,000 uh, worth in share or cash. And there's more payment to come. So we are one of, uh, not one, we are the biggest shareholders of Canadian Copper, a little bit shy than 10%. And uh, we are having that strategy as well, again, as a royalty to uh, give back to shareholder and have our own, you know, exposure to copper and uh, green uh, metals, uh, EV, all that, uh, you know, new uh, green metals as we just looking us for gold. So precious metal is our main flagship. So that is the reason why when we're talking about uh, building a, a gold camp, you know, during the winter time, last year we've drilled like up to 10,000 meters, altogether 13,000 meters, but that is coming from the length zone. But uh, following the work, we had a bit more time during the winter time to do more compilation, put everything together and get all the piece of, you know, the puzzle together. And it shows that there's gold everywhere, like very high grade gold. There's multiple possible deposits along strike and parallel additional zone. And they are uh, all located almost everywhere here on the, the, uh, the John Paul, the Portage, they are further away and then the William Brook. So those in color, this is a VTEM. This is a VTEM is a geophysical survey done by Airborne helicopter. Uh, once we uh, started working on the plane in 2021, we did all technical data to have a real good, good technical information to find more good stuff. So as you can see, uh, Portage has some gold, a little bit cobalt and nickel, John Paul uh, all as well, like many, Great uh, gold discovery made in the 80s. Uh, gold Terra just north of up last year, they come up with uh, five grams over 16 meters entrenching. Our main play, and there's a bit less work done on William Brook South. And the reason why is pretty simple. When you drill five grams over 50 meters right in the second hole, that's for sure that we keep working in that area. And as explained into the previous uh, you know, press release, uh, this year, strategy to spend about 70% of the budget on lengths, gold zone. So not just the length itself, which is 700 meters long, but the entire length potential, what we call a beginning, 
the length gold trend that they can extend a bit further up to maybe also Tantera, which is about uh, seven kilometers away. Uh, a lot of really nice uh, soil anomaly to uh, discover uh, some potential gold in it, and as well as you can see, many fault. So those are the two major structures, something similar to what uh, Newfound Gold has, the Appleton Fault. This is the originic fault, uh, part of a major system. So we have everything, all the ingredients to have many, many good, uh, good zone, many good deposit. The work done in the past for the last about 50 years was on that side, which is the limit from the younger rock where we are working now and the older rock, which is the Bathurst camp. So Bathurst camp was renewed for VMS. Everything has been looked in that area, which leave open ground for Puma. So most of the work was done by us only, uh, a little bit of work done in 2008 by Blue Note at the time. Just enough information to help us to find bigger stuff and you know higher grade stuff. So that will be you know that area. Seventy percent of the budget, as you cut through yesterday, or yes, times goes fast. Yes, yesterday we announced the, the closing about uh, you know the second phase. So all the money has been raised. We have a three million dollars budget. Uh, to uh, do some work on it. There's about a bit more than 2 million to be directed uh, minimum on site as a flow through uh, private placement offering. And we have raised a bit uh, roughly a bit more than a million dollars hard cash as well. So when I'm talking about, you know, 70% uh, and 30%, uh, that means there's about 30% of the effort that will be to discover additional new zone because we don't know, even if we're so excited and that's very, very great area, the lengths, as we've been concentrate most of the work there, we don't know if it's the best one. So maybe we could have something better. So we uh, doing as usual, what we do as a, the exploration uh, strategy is getting boots on ground. People since May, so I begin a month ago, we've sent the team on site to start working uh, on, uh, you know, new discovery, trenching, we had some backhoe, and, you know, visually, we already have made some nice discovery. The thing is, because there were no real work, we can't find anything anywhere, because the geology map from the government is not accurate, because it's never really been explored. So every time, almost every week, our team on site discover new volcanic unique a uh, new rhyolite, which are the old struck of the Langs Gold Zone. That is really, really, you know, uh, big upside potential for getting something even more significant. So 70% will be direct on the Langs, and you will understand why. You know, the people that they follow Puma for the last uh, three years, this is the main site. You see here was last year. Uh, the Lynx Gold Zone itself. So one of the perfect location, as you can see, there's no hill, big hill. It's about two kilometers away from paved road. There's no swamp. We have a small stream about 100 meters away. So just far enough to not have, uh, you know, some problem with it, but close enough to use for water, to drill. So that is the perfect, perfect location. So the same work that we've done over the years and that strategy has been understood and applied since also the base metal exploration is boot on ground exploration. As soon as we find a boulder, a block or something at surface or a cell anomaly, then we can do some trenching. So, you know, we do trenching after the first trench where we discover some gold. You can see the previous trench in the past. That's where they were done here as well. So after we discover some gold mineralization in the trenching, we apply for a stripping operation and we can strip. So that is the stripping done about 700 meters wide up uh, along, sorry, by 100 meters wide. It's all permitted. And to be sure, you know, to don't have any trouble in the future, Puma himself, the, we have put about $200,000 into the, uh, we, it's not really a bound, but that's money that we have sent to the government. So they secure that after, you know, hopefully we're going to have a mine, so we won't make anything. But let's say that we want to move away from that area. Uh, there's already some money in the government side to refill it. So uh, this is the way that uh, we are uh, getting some reclamation ready for the future. But hopefully what they're going to ask us is another 2 million because we're going to open the mine. So I don't want 
you know, to use that money to refill it. We want to use as a first deposit for a future mine. So all the gold there has been discovered on trenching by grab sample. So one of the best, best thing is grab sample at surface. As you can see, we see those quartz veins right there at surface. This is people walking on site. And that picture give you an idea of you know, the equipment that we most using. So this is what we call you know, the excavator. So when I'm talking about trenching and stripping, we use one excavator like this, but also with a bulldozer. So we do some pile. And this is the drill that was on site uh, probably at the end of last year program. So last year, 2022, following the discovery of the five grams over 50 meters, we drilled 10,000 meters within about 100 holes. So the goal of that uh, program was not to chase the high grade, was really, really to do systematic drilling, to understand the deposit, try to understand the orientation and the uh, you know, angle, the thickness of those veins, and mainly discovered high grade gold that has been used, as you can see, very high grade area. All the star is really something significant to define what we have now in hand. And this is the first part of the drilling program will be to drill test those or shoot at depth. Sorry, I cannot say or shoot, high grade shoot. So this is high grade shoot. This is nor yet because we don't have uh, any uh, resource estimate that they consider it as war. But anyway, you can see the color and you see, well, you know, the purple, the red is where we have those higher grade. So before doing the interpretation, we needed last time, last year, to drill those. So, you know, what we have in hand now is some very high grade shoe, but also we know that we won't go in that area. So over the 10,000 meters drilling program done last year, maybe three or 4,000 was drilled deeper to look on that side. But now we know, and that has been confirmed with the result that everything is dipping towards the sediment and a really, really shallow dipping about 25 degree. So there's a first 3,000 meters of pro drilling program will be launched as soon as the drill is ready. The drill has been ordered. Uh, we have talked, we have selected the drill company, and they are just uh, finalizing one drilling program before to bring the drill. So as soon as the drill will be on site, don't worry, you, it's going to be announced. The drill is on site, we are drilling. So you're going to be all you know known that the drilling is really, really start. Up to the time the drill will be on site, we keep doing the discovery with trenching and stripping and defining, keep defining the uh, you know gold camp uh, possible and many more uh, target. So uh, first 3,000 meters, and as you can see, really really shallow holes so far because one of the the, the, the potential is to have maybe an open pit. So that was shallow holes. Uh, there's people asking me why you don't drill deeper, but we will do it. But step by step, we will drill deeper once we're going to be confirming those orientation of the high grade, that's for sure. And also, you know, there's no reason to try to drill at 500 meters if, you know, everything has to be drilled at surface. So, you know, here we've drilled about 100 holes for 10,000 meters. If we would have done 500 meters hole instead, you know, we have done probably just just uh, the uh, 20 holes. So that's a big, big difference. As where we are in the process, we're still in exploration. But the thing is, we're still exploration company, but with a very nice defined deposit at surface. And a part of uh, the work this summer will be to continue to characterize the Lang's Gold Zone, de-risk the Lang's Gold Zone by drilling, continuing the MET test, and as you might have seen, uh, doing the 4,000 ton bulk sample that has been announced, uh, I think, in March this year. So it took about only three weeks to get the permit. And with that permit, we can also put a small pilot plant on site because the initial test was proving up that the recovery was mostly by gravity up to 92% gravity recovery. And if it's happening, still happening with the new result that's going to come, because I promised some assays back by March, uh, but now, you know, the, the company, the consultant, uh, I've been in New Brunswick also yesterday to meet those guys at RPC doing uh, that them who do the MET test. And they promised me within the next two weeks, we should have all the results from the big uh, MET test. 
So here is an highlight. I won't get through all those because if you want, you, you can ask me, but this is the same kind of drilling that we got, you know, from zero to 50 meters, five gram. As you can see, everything, you know, most of the big, nice hole started at surface or within the first, you know, uh, 50 meters from surface. The drilling done at Jaguar and Cougar were done only in 2008, and we have uh, seen where they are, but following the stripping at uh, the Jaguar Gold Zone, we know that they have been drilled a bit on site. And, you know, just a quick gossip here, which is funny. I mean, the Blue Note company at the time held the, uh, rest, uh, the, uh, the Caribou mine. And with our contact, Caribou now is on current maintenance. Trifali is doing bankrupt. But we have a good contact with the government judges, and we could get access to all the core. So right now, uh, all those 2008 holes are here into the core shack. So we're going to have a very good idea of you know, the mineralization, not just what has been found at surface and that's been confirmed by us, but also to look what would have been the grade of you know, lower grade, but really, really uh, longer intercept at surface. So as mentioning, the main goal will be to drill the extended depth, but as well, because there's all the good vein at surface, we have launched a drilling, uh, not a drilling, but a met test uh, last fall. So we took uh, 12 veins, so you can see here, so 600 pounds of the best vein, not best as grade, but best vein as continuity, like those vein has been selected. So you see this one is the length two vein, that one is the length one vein. So that was the grab sample. Uh, this picture is pretty nice because you can see those are right at the end of the stripping. So they can, part of the work this summer will be to extend as well those vein at surface. And you know, that vein, your little dot, black dot is because there were almost no gold in it. And we've drilled HQ for the med test. There were no gold in it. Uh, but then when we drill, boom, 14 grams over 3.6 uh, meters, or almost like uh, 2.5 grams over 25 meters at 25 at 50 meters vertical. So we know now that the goal is, you know, can be some lineation from high grade goal to no goal. And that's part of the understanding that is going to be continuing with different experts, but also by more mapping and do the drilling that we're going to, con you know, characterize a little bit more those veins. And this is really, really important before launching the bulk sample, because a bulk sample is not just to take 4,000 ton and, and, and do it like this. If we want to get real data, real information, and be really helpful for the rest of the program, um, not just the program, but for the next few years, we need to do really good you know, science. So a part of it is that's why we've been uh, having a, a new guy on uh, advisory to the board, Mr. Simon Domini. Uh, which is a PhD and it helping us. So the first step before launching the bulk was what we hope to receive within the next two weeks, the initial recipe to get the goal. So wow, the best way to recover the goal from it, to have a flow sheet ready and, and get what we're going to need to do the bulk sample. So bulk sample on that to finalize characterizing. Also, we're going to do some more drilling and that's going to be the expense. But the other part of, and as we mentioned in the strategy, is to expand the zone, but not just here. This is the 700 meters that we've been talking since the beginning, but there's an extent all the way through here for another about three kilometers. So a part of the expansion of length on the, what we call the 70% of the budget will be directed to keep doing the trenching in light and be ready for drilling. So another 3,000 meters of drilling will be drilled along strike, but followed what has been start la uh, beginning of May, trenching to make sure we control well the contact because all the information, everything that's been done there since the last three years, help us to find more gold and the best way to find gold along strike. So that will be, you know, mainly the uh, target itself. And as you can see here, this is a really nice mag anomaly that they can be the potential source of the gold. We don't know yet. This is purely, you know, a uh, model, but the models work well because those epithermal veins, uh, you know, located really close from that uh, big mag, 
that's pretty, pretty nice uh, target to follow. And if you can look here, this is mainly very, very nice uh, soil in place, anomaly, golden soil anomaly that has never been touched yet. So, but look, the scale, there's about two kilometers by two kilometers. Oh, it's right in there. So 1.5 by 3.5 kilometers of really nice soil anomaly that has never been really explored. So that's the reason why that we need to show the potential having, you know, a big, big uh, gold camp into the entire land package. So if we go, that is the length. This zone is that uh, what we call the new, there's a new showing here. And this place is, you know, the discovery and the work done uh, mainly by stripping last year, which is the Jaguar, the Cougar, and the Pantera zone. So if you look again, you know, if we're not talking about size and blue sky potential, you know, that length zone, the 700 meters 3D model is that little zone here in red, but that mag anomaly, this is the huge mag 3D inversion that can be the source. So if it's all full of gold, that could contain multi-million ounces of gold right there. But then, as you can see as well, over like below the Jaguar and the Cougar, we have another big 3D mag inversion that they can be linked or the source of it. So if you look a bit further away, we have the Pantera once again, and another one right here, which has no name yet. So very, very potentially uh, nice target, sorry. Hmm. So that is the, the area. If we look a little bit more detail, if we look, that was the length cold zone. If we move about four kilometers north of it, there's the Jaguar and the Cougar. And those are the Jaguar and the Cougar. There's uh, uh, below its uh, chargeability map. And this is all the discovery made by Puma and some previously, but this is all the trenching done. So last year, you know, into the exploration, we have done the trenching and we uncovered some really nice gold mineralization, but then again, applying the same exploration method, which is trenching. So those are, you know, even 0.1 to one grams gold right there that show us there's gold in the system. This is the first trench. So this is the size of a backhoe, about three feet wide. So when we have gold, then we apply for stripping. Stripping is removing the entire ground and we take as much sample as we can. So you can see here in red is one to five grams. So compared to lengths, the Jaguar is more consistent, lower grade, but more consistent than very, very high grade vein within the rhyolite. Again, same uh, parabol contact, sediment and rhyolite and the gold are within the rhyolite. So that is, you know, that zone. Also, we did, as you can see here, other trenches. So we have followed the contact. Uh, another one gram there, which is about another 100 meters away and on the other side as well. But the main zone will be here and the holes that has been drilled, as you can see last year, uh, not last year, but in 2008, were drilled on the edge of what was the best zone in this year. Cougar gold zone, that one is a bit less explored than the Jaguar. And we only had some uh, trenching with very nice gold in it. Uh, very, you know, some up to 60 grams. This one is more similar to the lengths as uh, the lithology and the rock itself is uh, high grade quartz length within the rhyolite and close to the contact. And in 2008, they had a hole uh, with uh, 54 grams over 2.2 meters dry right there. And nothing else really has been drilled in that area. So if you look, those three spots, is those little tree. So that's remind me, you know, another volcanic dome where, you know, the gold at the contact is located. This time it seems to have gold at both contact, but almost, you know, nothing else has been done in here. But the good, good thing here, paved road. So again, again, location, location, really close from the paved road. We're getting from here and really nice access to drill and do the exploration. And the last discovery made last year was the Pantera. And what we've done in that area was a big soil anomaly, a soil survey, but it uncovered really, really nice uh, gold uh, in soil over 2.5 kilometers. And only one trench done. 
is the uh, that uh, this with uh, up to mostly 10 grams, eight grams. So really nice gold and it's only been trenched one places. So that's the part on the 30% of what we call the exploration building a camp is a few trenching to be done on those areas. But that is even bigger than the size of the line so far. So potential to have mil, many, many more uh, zones. And basically, you know, always having different stage of exploration. So this one, early stage. This one, a little bit more advanced, trenching only. The third one is stripping. And then is the ultimate goal is to drill those area. So that was done in the past. Also, what you're going to hear a little bit this year compared to uh, last year is just technical because we have a huge land package. There's gold potential everywhere, but also we have a little bit of work to be done uh, to keep the claim in good standing. So this year we have about $50,000, not a big money, but at least this is a, a, a beginning of getting the team back on site, doing some more discovery and you know work on the portage and also the jump pole. Uh, which are uh, a little bit more similar to uh, you know, a gold porphyry, a uh, disintegrated gold in the porphyry, compared to the portage, which is a mafic intrusion. And as you can see here, there's cobalt, nickel, and a little bit of copper associated with the gold. So there's a part of it that, you know, for the, P, the fans of the, you know, uh, strategic metals, but we're not working to find those, but we can have as well on the ground. So this is you know, those uh, area, those hole has been drilled in 86 by Noranda, few little holes into the jump pole. So just to remind and recap a little bit, you know, the strategy, but also the history, which was pretty short. Huh? If you're talking about only getting the first um, visit site in 2019, uh, doing some acquisition, uh, doing the compilation 2020, this is where we really, really start the trenching in May or July in 2020. Discovery all in 2021, that's where we start with a $2 million investment, where we did the discovery all, and also we did the first trenching and cleaning of the Langs Gold Zone. And finally, uh, Ultimate was the drilling program in 2022, where we defined uh, about three main uh, high-grade shoe that's going to be drilled. So if we're looking about the $3 million budget this year and following years, is being lead, you know, the 6,000 meters of drilling. Hopefully, you know, the team will be able to cut costs, which are now about $250 a meter, but we can drill more. Uh, main thing is to demonstrate the high rate at depth and along strike over the 700 meters. The original drilling over three, we're going to initiate the bulk sampling and keep doing brand new discovery like uh, weekly. So, finger crossed, we hope to have within the summertime. Uh, like a continuous news of flow and, uh, you know, about what we found in ground, keep the people informed and hopefully, you know, bring some investors. So we're planning as well to get some site visit for investor. So Mia, you know, uh, we're going to be in touch with you and organize that for the people that you want to travel on site. This is really, really impressive when you see that directly on ground. And the railroad time is a really, really nice place as well to visit. So if you think to get some holiday during the summertime, just get your campaign car and drove to New Brunswick. We'll be more than happy to have you on site uh, and, and show you, you know, our nice discovery. Uh, please, if it's uh, in June, bring your mosquitoes uh, liquid because they are start as well. So it's up, but it's the mosquitoes are back. So that is, you know, what has been done. Mainly, you know, one of the main thing for us is low cost exploration, having the boot on ground, really doing all kind of uh, exploration. The beauty and the advantage that we have there in New Brunswick is really shallow overburden. When we find some boulders or a float at surface, most of the time we strip and we uncovered the, the mineralization, you know, really, really shallow. That help to never drill blind and always have really nice uh, uh, discovery potential. So this is not up to date. As I mentioned uh, uh, yesterday or uh, the day before of Tuesday, we closed the private placement. I just run to the site 
so I haven't uh, had time to uh, update uh, the slide. I think now with the cruising, we have about 130 million shares out. The warrant, and for sure they have a little bit more, but there's another about 7 million potential in the treasury. Our main shareholders, beside the big believer that we have since 2019, is Crescat Capital, which is the, uh, the, the, the only institutional so far, and Plethora uh, Precious Metal, I found. So this is the same team. Alain Houpé is the general manager here on site. Rick Thibault is a mining engineer, really, really helpful on you know, helping us to find a way to put that into production. Régent Gosselin has been uh, around an exploration company, CEO of company for the last about 30 years. Uh, Laura Arenada, she has her own drilling company, a uh, famous business woman in uh, New Brunswick. Michel Fontaine, for most of you, doesn't have to be described. You know him well. He's uh, working with Windfall uh, uh, Geotech, uh, EHI uh, company. Myself, the shorter one, always, always in every picture. And Dominique Gagné, our main uh, senior uh, geologist, one of my best friends as well, personal, and uh, is living in Rimouski since uh, we've been working, uh, I think, back in 2017. To, uh, seven, 2007. To together. So that was it. Uh, I don't know if you have any question. Uh, as Thank I said, you, Marcel. Yes. yes, I will invite everybody. Nothing's come in so far. So I invite you to write down your questions in the chat uh, if you have any. Uh, maybe, Marcel, while we wait for some questions to come in, uh, you mentioned the bulk sample and yeah. we had a news release about it earlier this spring. Uh, maybe remind people what we're hoping to achieve with the bulk sample. Yes. So the the you know the upside that we have in in that place is having access to the surface. We have access. It's kind of a pre-stripping operation, so we have direct direct access to the vein. Those kind of epithermal vein. I mean, sometimes they have some nugget effect, and also we you know it's pretty hard just by drilling if we don't want to drill like say. 300,000 meters of drilling to get a really good idea of what would be the grade. So having that in mind and knowing as well that the recovery so far was mainly by gravity. So uh, one of the big objectives of that is to know that, to find a way to confirm that going from one drop sample after that with one drill hole, and then we have one drum is gonna come, next will be 200 tons. So as bigger the, the sample is, as you know, uh, more accurate you can have the grade of it and, con and characterize as well uh, the vein. So this is for sure that uh, one of the objective of it is to confirm the grades of it and uh, also as well to see what would be the nugget effect uh, on, on that. Uh, that it is not make sure this is still exploration and that bulk sample, even if we characterize the vein at surface for 50 meters, that doesn't mean that 50 meters away, that's going to be the same grade, but at least we're going to do that, that area, when we have those information, we can correlate it. And as well, you know, once we're going to be ready to do the resource estimate, that will be really, really helpful to maybe increase the grade because the company for 43101, as we have very, very high grade uh, gold and gold result, sometimes they cut those at 10 or 20 or 30 grams. And you know it's make a big difference on the resource. So having a better idea to, to the correlation between the drilling and the real in situ veins that will help us. Perfect. Um, also, you mentioned that you know we have a lot of things happening uh, this summer. We did have a news release last week that outlined exactly what our plans are for 2023. Um, so what are we expecting in terms of news flow? Yes. So basically what we have so far is for sure the, you know, it's always hard as a junior company to know what will be really the news one after the other one, because, you know, anything in a day, every time now there's a team on site since a month, every day I can wait to get a call like it happened. There's a reason why I'm on site today, because there was something that he said, no, oh, Marcel, you have to drive here and look at that. So anytime, any day I can get a call. So this is really that, you know, uh, the... The, the, it's always uh, a surprise. But what we know that we have in hand is the MET test. 
So far, we know that it should be really good. So one of the news will be the recovery, gravity recovery on those hydrate veins. That make a big difference on the economic of it, basically because you probably not use any chemical, it's going to be gravity, uh, no cyanide, uh, fast permitting. So that news will be really important for the development of the length zone. As well, we, as you know, we've been working on sites since the last month. So the good news, good news for everybody, it seems that the lab are a bit faster than it used to be. So we don't wait two months to get the result back. So there's already about 200 samples at the lab made from uh, discovery. We, we use the word discovery because it's, we discovered powerball rhyolite with quartz vein. We don't know if there's gold in it or not so far, but at least, you know, we have the furball unit, we have the good rock, and we see the quartz vein. So that should come as well pretty soon on, you know, the, uh, the news flow is to get, you know, some surface new discovery and, you know, finger across because I'm really, really hoping to get the drill next week on site. Hopefully it will, uh, but that will be a major news as soon as the drill is on site, then, you know, drilling, getting some VG, we know where are those potential higher grade. So hopefully we're going to get some visual information from uh, the drilling as well. And any, any kind of surprise that I don't even know right now. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, also a question that just came in. How, uh, how deep do we think the deepest hole will be that we will drill this summer under the Lynx Gold Zone to kind of uh, follow these uh, high grade shoots? Well, so far, you know, I, I don't have any kind of information like this. I mean, because basically, basically it's going to be probably 250 meters, but I don't think that the deeper hole this summer will be at the Langs Gold Zone because we have very, very nice target that can be a game changer for Puma that they can be a little bit drilled deeper. So to me, uh, 250 meters will be maximum at length because there's so much to discover. And before getting driller deeper, then, you know, for sure, it's all faulted. So, you know, if you do like systematic drilling to follow the depth, then you can know where it has been shift and move. But if you just try to drill at 500 meters, it doesn't make any sense for me not right now. So I would say 250 vertical on length, but uh, not be surprised there's deeper hole somewhere else into the property. So keep in tune. Yeah. Excellent. And as you said before, we need to understand the, yeah. the structure and what constrains the mineralogy. And it doesn't make much sense to go much deeper if we may not hit anything. Yeah. Um, other question that came in, uh, what is our relationship with First Nations? Yeah, we have a, you know, on my trip, I have met them. We have a really good relationship so far. Uh, Pabino Lake has been supportive to us, uh, which are part of what we call the MTI, an association of the Mi'kmaq into northern New Brunswick. We have signed an MOU with them, and I am always talking. So, you know, there's really, really nothing to mention on it. Good relationship, keep in touch, uh, uh, say hello, but, you know, there's, uh, we have been working in Bathurst area for the last 15 years. So that relationship is not just based since William Brooke. Uh, you know, I cannot say we are all friends, but I have some friends with those uh, First Nation group, uh, exactly. So, and, uh, you know, uh, we are planning Puma to involve them at some other level, like sooner than later. So I think there's some development on the First Nation side that is going to be really, really benefit for Puma and the entire area. Because there's not just the First Nation, you know, we're close to San Quentin, so we want to involve First Nation, but we want to see to uh, involve the local stakeholder, you know, the people that we are in their background. For sure that we're on Crown land, so for sure the main owner is the government, but we have to deal with the people from San Quentin, the local contractor, so we try to make sure that everybody can be involved and at least have their input into their what we want to do. Mainly for the First Nation, something in mind is I, I, I met them. I said, what do you want to do after? Let's say we have a mine that can be a really nice lake. Do you want to have camp? Do you want to have something for training for the youth? You want to, to have some place for food, uh, moves? So everything can be done. The only thing is we need to talk because for us, let's say we have a mine. We can mine it 20 years. 
After that, we're going to have to do something. So if we do something in direction that what they want and help them or the regional area, that same cost for us, but big, big, big return for the entire New Brunswick. With that said, Marcel, and, and we've seen the and shown the pictures of the extensive stripping that we've done, yes. uh, is there any concern from anyone being First Nations or the local communities with the stripping that we're doing? Uh, I, I'm, to be honest, the one that the word didn't come to me. So maybe there's people that they are not happy. I don't know that that could be possible. But the stripping itself, it seems to be big, but we are in the wood cutting area. So when you see some area where the wood is cut, there's a lot, a lot bigger area that's been cut and, you know, proceed for forestry and get some wood. So even if you remove the gravel over the area that is already cut, I mean, it, that's not a big, big impact. The most important for those local people, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, what's going to happen if you leave? But now, you know, we move faster than them and we say okay we're going to put one hundred and twenty thousand dollars on the side i gave the money to the government so for sure it will be reclaimed because there's people that they are scared that the company like us do exploration they don't find anything they turn bankrupt and then they move so they're going to have the money to reclaim it and just to reclaim it it's not so expensive replant so all the money is on the side to do that but if you look, it's funny because I compare just the impact of the Carlton Park, and there's a bigger impact than what we're doing here. But that has been said, you know, we always try to avoid cutting as much as possible. And just as an example, there's some area last year that we have not done any trenching because we have a really, really good relationship with the forestry company. And we know where they're going to cut the following year. So this year, we went on John Paul property and we knew that during the winter time, they did some wood cutting. So they cut clear cut an area. And this year we went. So if we would have really, really want last year, we would have been there trying to cut the wood and make an impact. But now we try to go where there's some work done and mainly to save costs as well, because I don't have to pay when it's already cut. And also when you do some discovery, you can do the trenching there or there or there unless that if you're the wood area, you have to cut somewhere, so you have to keep it. So it's all beneficial for everybody so far. Absolutely. And, and to some of the concerns, sometimes of the questions that we get from investors, of course, all of this is permitted. You know, we, oh, yeah. we haven't done anything that is not, we're not going behind anybody's back. So everybody is fully aware of what it is that we're doing. And uh, we're, I think, very proactive in terms of thinking at the end of the road and what we're going to do to rehabilitate it. And, exactly. and as Eric Lemieux just mentioned, you know, perhaps as we develop this and if we have a lot of different little open pits, then in terms of the rehabilitation, this can become, you know, a recreation area with little lakes or little ponds or what have you, correct? That's a little bit what I mentioned to them with, say, a camp, you know, a camping. Uh, we're going to have electricity because we're going to need it. So it could be anything. And, you know, unless it's a really, really, really big mine, I mean, the mines that they are currently operating, we don't see so much 50 years mine anymore, you know, because the process is faster. So maybe 20 years would be something. So if you look, you know, the the age of the people be here, I mean, 20 years is nothing for mother her neither. So that's Absolutely. the way we have to see it. Yes. Uh, last question as yes. well is if you could go back to our 3D model, could you yes. just reaffirm uh, where the mineralization, how the mineralization is dipping? Yes. So uh, to, 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 to. this picture. Mm -hmm. So as uh, if I'm going here, I'm going to go back a little bit one more. So here is Pepitas. This is the certain part of it. This is Moose, this is the Northeast part. So the 3D models of it is along that. So along that, and it's gold mineralization is dipping this way here with an orientation this way, because there's two main, uh, foli two main structure, the foliation and et uh, et the lithology. So there's the contact from, as you can see here, the contact from the rhyolite and the sediment. This is one thing. And within it, the regional foliation make a link. So there, it's kind of having, let's see, two different things like that. 
sorry, you know, you have the main contact and then you have the foliation this way and the intersection of those two here that makes some pencil shape and those pencil shape is those one that you can see here. So it's dipping, you know, that contact and the foliation makes a, a pencil of about only 25 degrees. So those purple zone are the high grade shoe to follow. And the whole number five, uh, two that we drill where we got five grams over 50 meters is because we get three different or shoes. So we have one at surface, we get the second one and we get the third one. So, you know, that's the reason that we not only have to drill at depth, because if we look here, then we can have three, four, five or so within 100 meters old. So once we're gonna know that it's going really this way, then I'll have the balls to drill here and go 500 meters, but that can be moved. And this one can be another one. So it's, uh, you know, as long as we can keep drilling at surface. So it seems to be drilled, but those holes were drilled. That's the line of the drilling, but behind. So this is all the extent of the hole. And as you can see, there's only one or two holes drilled on the good contact side. So, you know, this, all those are further in the picture. Right. Thank you very much, Marcel. Yeah. I think, you know, we've we've kept people almost an hour. I know yes. that you were going to attempt to maybe go outside. Yes. Um, if for anybody who's logged in and if you want to stick around, that would be great. Um, there is maybe a chance that we'll lose Marcel. So yes. just be aware of it. Uh, I just want to remember, remind people that we are going to be in Quebec City. If people are attending the mining investment uh, event of the North at um, Chateau Laurier at the Voltige du Québec Armory, uh, Puma will be there at the MI3 Salon or Lounge. Uh, come and meet us. We'll be there all three days. So an opportunity for you to meet us face to face and, and to, to ask questions that you may not have, have answered. Um, so I do encourage you to come in. And at any point in time, please, we're always available. Send us an email. Happy to answer any questions you may have. So thank you again very much for participating in this webinar. Um, Marcel will yes. follow you as you go outside. And again, yes. if uh, the connection breaks, uh, well, we'll try to post this webinar as, as well online in uh, the near future. So thank you so, again very much, everyone. Thank you very much. And as I said, if I we get lost, that's bye-bye. We're going to talk. And I'm going to walk through here first. Uh, oh, it's already. No, perfect. Good. So I don't have a have good, good computer. So do you still me? see me? I still see you. Yeah. OK, perfect. So here is the office. And it's going to be a big surprise uh, for the team. But here is the houses. So that's a new friend working with us now, a new geologist. The team is the, where we're living. Etienne, Etienne Farb, geologist with me. We've been in school together uh, in UCAM, uh, about 20 years experience. Is uh, our main technician here. Eva, be with us for the last uh, still 20 years. Uh, nice setup. And now I'm going to walk outside here, trying to get into the car shack. So for sure now was pretty good. I'm inside, but I'll go here. So I don't know if you can see a little bit. This is sorry, but that is where we have the beer at five o'clock after the the, uh, the main work on site. That's the do you see behind there is the uh, core. So we have our home core rack outside. This is all the truck. Geominex is our consultant. So uh, we have right now about eight people on site. This is the truck that you can see. This is the, the trailer because sometimes when we do some drilling, we're doing as well some uh, core logging right on site. What we call it is the short log. And then we bring everything here into the main core shack. So last year, 10,000 meters of core is stored on those core rack just beside. And I'm gonna try to get inside here where we do the main work on the core. So that,
Oh, we may have lost Marcel. Let's see if he reconnects when he gets into the core shack because there is Wi-Fi in there. For the geologists, the oh, new there one goes. to compare. And then as well, mm -hmm. this is all, you know, the main core rack. That's on the table, all number uh, five drill in 2008. So that's a big, big new surprise that we've been able to get those score from 2008 because we didn't have seen it. And on this side, that. Marcel, I don't know if you can hear us, but you're, you're cutting out a little bit, like, so. Yes. Marcel, do you hear me? We may have lost him, but you got a little bit of a um, a little bit of a look. Oh, there we are. Maybe he's back. Yeah. You got a little yeah, bit of a look back. of yeah, our yeah, core back shack. Back. Yeah. Yeah. We we Great. lost you. We saw a little bit of it in Marcel, which was good, yeah. but it kind of went in and out. Um, yeah. So I was just saying to people, hopefully you got a little bit of a snapshot of uh, the house and the conditions that we're working with and the core shack in Saint Quentin, which is a really nice setup. As Marcel was saying, we're very fortunate to have that in close proximity to our uh, site, which again enables us to do very low cost exploration in New Brunswick. So really the best yeah. of both worlds. And thank you again very much, Marcel, for taking the time to do this webinar. And thank yeah. you for all of you for participating. And we will set up another webinar as well, maybe this summer as we have more news that comes in. Um, but again, feel free to send us notes or if you have any questions, please do not hesitate. I just so, want to add uh, on yes, that, um, yeah, just add that the people that they are willing to have a site visit, but it's serious. I mean, just don't put your name there, but if you're really serious to drive or come here, we can organize it and we'll be more than happy to fix something. Bye-bye everybody. Bye. So with thank you very much, Marcel. So with that said, yes, you know, email me. Let me know that you're in uh, your intent in coming on site, and we can organize a site visit. Of course, we'll try to get as many people together as possible, um, not having like one-off uh, visits at the time because we want to really show you what the site is all about and take the time to be with you. And of course, we have work to do on site, so we want to make sure that we kind of maximize your time on site and also make sure that it doesn't have too much of an impact for us in the field. But again, the feel free to well. send us or no and yeah. safety, of course. So yeah. with that said, thank you very much, everyone. We've we've occupied an hour of your time. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Mia. Encore. Merci. Il y a pas de quoi. Et, Au revoir. Euh, une bonne fois en français, les copains. Bye. Absolument. Au revoir.